Hey, what is up guys? Eric Thane here from Cinema Mastery and today we're gonna to be talking about slow motion. Before we jump in though, if you're learning filmmaking right now, I wanna tell you about a training I did recently that's a full hour long, teaching you everything you need to know about how to make cinematic Hollywood-like videos, even if you don't have expensive camera gear. So I'll put a link to that down below so you guys can go check it out. But for now, let's jump into this video. So the first thing we need to understand when we're talking about slow motion is how frame rates work. The frame rate of your camera is the number of still frames or images it captures in one second of video, and it's measured in frames per second. So a slower frame rate will give you a more stuttered look, and a faster frame rate will give you a more fluid motion in your shot. Now the standard frame rate for the cinematic look for movies and commercials is 24 frames per second, so if you're going for a cinematic look, you always wanna finish in that frame rate. But if you wanna shoot slow motion, you actually shoot at a higher frame rate, like 60 frames per second, or 120 frames per second, and then conform the footage back to 24 frames per second in post, which I'll show you how to do in a little bit. Since the higher frame rate has more frames per second, when you slow it down, those frames get stretched out, creating the illusion of slow motion. This is called over cranking your camera. And the reason is because back in the film days, camera operators would literally over crank their cameras or basically crank them faster, which would feed the film through the camera faster, causing it to capture more frames in one second. Now, of course, everything is done digitally. So on most cameras, you should be able to just choose the frame rate you want. So the bottom line is when you want normal speed footage, shoot at 24 frames per second. And when you want slow motion, shoot at a higher frame rate and then conform it back to 24 frames per second. What this means is that you can't just take your regular 24 FPS footage and slow it down in post because you'll end up with really stuttered footage because there aren't enough frames to fill up the extra time that it takes to play the clip. And what this also means is that you have to choose the playback speed you want before you hit record. So you can't just shoot an entire video in 60 frames per second and then only slow down the clips you want because all the clips you don't slow down will look extra fluid, which kills the cinematic look. You'll actually see some people doing this and it looks really bad. So unless you're going for a speed ramp effect, you need to shoot at the right frame rate. And I know it's kind of a hassle to have to change your frame rate all the time while shooting if you're switching between normal and slow speed. But if you wanna shoot films that look professional and cinematic, this is just part of the game. So I recommend getting familiar with different frame rates so you know which ones to use in different scenarios based on what you're shooting and what type of motion you want. Speaking of different frame rates, let's actually go through some of the most commonly used frame rates and some of the scenarios you might find yourself using them in. If you're shooting on a higher end camera like a RED, then it'll usually give you the ability to choose the exact frame rate you want. But on most cameras, you just have a few predetermined options, which are usually around 24, 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. So first is 24 frames per second, which like I mentioned already is your standard frame rate for cinematic motion at normal speed. This is what you're gonna use a majority of the time and it's especially important if you're shooting anything that needs to sync up with audio, like a music video or dialogue scene. Next is 30 frames per second, which honestly doesn't get talked about much by filmmakers because it doesn't give you that dramatic slowdown effect. But I personally think it's one of the best kept secrets of cinematography. So when you conform 30 frames per second footage to 24, it gives you a really subtle slow motion effect that honestly most people usually won't even notice. They'll be able to feel the effect, but probably won't be able to put their finger on exactly what it is. You can use 30 frames per second to create a subtle dreamy effect on your footage in situations where you don't want it to feel like slow motion, but you need that little extra touch. Next up is 60 frames per second. And this is just your standard middle of the road slow motion effect. 60 frames per second looks good on just about anything. 
and really starts to drive home a noticeable slow down effect on your footage. So in just about any situation where you're trying to slow down the motion of your shot, as long as it's not something that's moving too fast, 60 frames per second can get the job done. Now 120 frames per second is where you really start to see a significant slow motion effect. And it can be used on most footage as well if that's the look you're going for, but I personally think it looks best on fast moving objects since you really start to see them slowing down at this frame rate. Now obviously 120 isn't the highest you can go. There are cameras that can shoot at thousands of frames per second and really slow down time. But these frame rates are what you'll typically see on consumer and professional cameras today. Now one important thing to note is that as you change your frame rate, you always need to change your shutter speed along with it. So no matter what frame rate you're shooting at, you should always set your shutter speed to half or double your frame rate, depending on how you look at it. So that means if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, which makes each frame 1 24th of a second, then you should set your shutter speed to 1 48th of a second. At 30 frames per second, your shutter speed should be 1 60th, and so on and so forth. This will give you that smooth cinematic motion no matter what frame rate you're shooting at. But it's important to keep in mind that as you increase your frame rate, you also have to increase your shutter speed, which means you need a lot more light in order to keep proper exposure. So at 120 frames per second, your shutter speed is going to be 1 240th of a second. So you're going to need a lot of light. So that's just something to think about before you go shooting everything in 120 frames per second. Now, once you've got your high frame rate footage shot, it's time to take it into the editing software and convert it back to 24 frames per second. And a common mistake that I see a lot of beginners make is that they just go into their time line and change the speed of the clip. The problem with doing this is that it doesn't give you a perfect conversion between frame rates and you might end up with dropped frames and jittery footage. So to do it the right way, in Premiere Pro you just right click on the clip and choose interpret footage, then type in the frame rate you want to conform to, which in this case is 24 frames per second. In Final Cut Pro you just go to the retime menu and select automatic speed. And if you're using another editing software, there should be a similar option to do the same thing. The only exception to this rule is if you're trying to create a speed ramp of Effect where the clip gradually changes between normal and slow motion. And in that case, you would just select a portion of the clip that you want to be in slow motion and just slow down that section. But that's a different topic for another video. Now, frame rates in slow motion are just one tiny part of everything that goes into making a cinematic looking video. So if you want to learn how to make cinematic films, even if you don't have expensive camera gear, be sure to check out the training that I'll link down below. It's a full hour long and in it I share my top 10 cinema hacks for making your videos look like a Hollywood movie really quickly and easily. So check it out. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, write me a comment down below. Keep shooting awesome stuff, and I'll see you on the next one.